थैंक यू नियम 377 के अधीन सभा पटल पर रखे जाने वाले मामलों के संबंध में अध्यक्ष पीठ द्वारा की जाने वाली घोषणा जिन माननीय सदस्यों को आज नियम 377 के अधीन मामलों को उठाने की अनुमति प्रदान की गई है वे अपने मामलों के अनुमोदित पाठ को 20 मिनट के अंदर व्यक्तिगत रूप से सभा पटल पर रख दे श्री श्री शुभ ब्रह्मणम जयशंकर जी सर स्पीकर सर आई राइज टू अप्राइज दिस ऑगस्ट हाउस ऑफ द की फॉरेन पॉलिसी एंगेजमेंट्स एंड इनिशिएटिव्स टेकन बाय इंडिया सिंस द बजट सेशन विच एंडेड ऑन सिक्स अप्रैल 2023 The period witnessed several crucial high-level diplomatic engagements, including interactions of the Honorable President, the Honorable Vice President, and the Honorable Prime Minister with foreign counterparts in India and abroad. I myself visited a number of nations, as did our ministers of state, and we received many of our foreign colleagues here in India. Through these efforts at multiple levels. we were able to advance our national objectives and interests in a volatile and uncertain world in terms of the diplomatic engagements of the honorable president she hosted the king of cambodia from may 29 to 31 on his first state visit to india this marked the celebrations of the 70th anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relations between india and cambodia Honorable President was the chief guest of the celebrations commemorating the 150 years of arrival of Indians in Suriname in Latin America in June. She was conferred Suriname's highest distinction, the Grand Order of the Chain of the Yellow Star. Uh, Speaker Sir, I think this is a matter of pride for all Indians. Honorable President also visited Serbia in the same month. Honorable Vice President visited the United Kingdom on May 5 and 6 to attend the coronation ceremony of King Charles III. He interacted with various leaders including the presidents of Germany, of Israel and Brazil. He also met Indian students and diaspora members. In June, Honorable Vice President engaged his counterparts in Zam- Zimbabwe and Gambia in New Delhi. and received the deputy prime minister of the DRC Democratic Republic of Congo during this period honorable prime minister visited seven countries and each of these visits speaker sir is notable and should be appreciated by all members of the house bilateral visits were made to australia to the united states egypt france and uae prime minister participated in the quad and the G7 meetings in Japan and he co-chaired the third FIPIC summit in Papua New Guinea he also hosted the prime minister of Nepal and the president of Sri Lanka in New Delhi so the official state visit to the united states of prime minister narendra modi from june 20 to 23 was only the second by an indian prime minister he was also accorded the rare privilege of addressing the joint session of the us congress for the second time he is the only indian prime minister to have done it twice in washington dc prime minister was given a formal state welcome at the white house as a special gesture the us government had invited nearly 8000 members of the indian diaspora to witness the arrival ceremony Prime Minister held bilateral talks with the US President on June 22nd. President Biden hosted both a state dinner and a private dinner in honor of the Prime Minister at the White House. The Prime Minister interacted with CEOs of tech companies individually as also in a round table that he and President Biden uh, co-chaired. He invited them to strengthen the presence in India and their operations here. Prime Minister addressed young entrepreneurs and participated in a skill and innovation meeting 
along with the First Lady, Dr. Jill Biden. Sir, this was truly a path-breaking visit and I would like to highlight the key outcomes which are reflected in the joint statement. They are, one, both sides agreed to augment technology cooperation, especially through the initiative for critical and emerging technologies, which focus on artificial intelligence, semiconductors, space, quantum, and telecom. India was included as a member in the Mineral Security Partnership, which aims to accelerate the development of critical energy mineral supply chains. Two, under a defense industrial cooperation roadmap, the defense industries and startups of both countries announced their intent to engage in co-production and other activities. A U.S. company, GE Aerospace, announced that they would manufacture jet engines in India through the transfer of technology to Hindustan Aeronautics Limited for our light combat aircraft production. So this is a very, very important outcome. It has been our effort as a country to try to get engine manufacturing for the last 40 years. So to get this during this visit is truly uh, something which the country should appreciate. Three, the Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO, uh, signed the Artemis Accords with NASA, the national, U.S. National Aeronautics and Space Administration, for cooperation in civil exploration of outer space for peaceful purposes. NASA and ISRO announced that they would cooperate in human space flight and launch a joint effort to the International Space Station in 2020. Four, the two countries resolved six outstanding bilateral trade disputes in WTO through mutually agreed solutions. This is a very unusual, very exceptional way of resolving uh, trade matters. Uh, and again, sir, is something which the House should note uh, and appreciate. They, uh, the two countries agreed to strengthen collaboration between our respective SMEs and to boost innovation linkages. In the five, in the semiconductor domain, three American companies, very well-known companies, made announcements to build a semiconductor assembly and test facility in India and for training Indian engineers and workers. Six, in the telecommunications sector, both agreed to collaborate towards a bilateral trusted network, trusted sources framework, enable participation of Indian companies in the U.S. rip and replace program, and undertake ORAN reciprocal projects. India and the U.S. agreed to also accelerate cooperation in the field of green hydrogen. <coughs> Seven, to deepen people-to-people -people ties. And all honorable members should have an interest in this particular part of the cooperation. Because we have a diaspora of 4.4 million Indians uh, in the United States, the U.S. has decided to open two new consulates in Bengaluru and Ahmedabad. India will also take steps to operationalize a new consulate in Seattle and look for two other locations. Uh, seven, we agreed to strengthen education partnerships and the U.S. agreed to return 105 antiquities that were illegally trafficked to the United States. Nine, given our shared vision of free, open and inclusive Indo-Pacific, uh, we agreed to commence an Indian Ocean dialogue and the U.S. will support our Indian Ocean, uh, uh, the Indo-Pacific Oceans Initiative. Uh, and 10, India and U.S. will work together for the development of digital public infrastructure and also strengthen our cooperation in multilateral banks to address global challenges. <coughs> Sir, honorable members, I think all honorable members would be interested to know that Prime Minister himself led the 9th International Day of Yoga on 21 June at the UN headquarters in New York it involved 135 nationalities and it set a Guinness world record. World record served for the number of countries for any single uh, event. In
thought leaders meeting in Hiroshima on 20 May 2010. At the Quad meeting, the leaders reviewed recent developments in the Indo-Pacific and discussed opportunities for Quad to work further on its priorities. They released a Quad leaders' vision statement. They announced a new clean energy supply chain initiative, a Quad infrastructure fellowship program, a Quad partnership for cable connectivity and resilience, and we will be working together, sir, uh, for the first ORAN deployment in the Indo-Pacific in Palau. The leaders released a Quad statement also on critical and emerging technology standards, apart from reviewing the progress that we have made on our maritime domain awareness initiative. They launched a Quad investment Investors Network, and I'm happy to inform the House that Prime Minister has invited all Quad leaders to India for the next summit in 2024. Sir, Prime Minister participated in the outreach summit of the G7. He held meetings with 14, 14 presidents and prime ministers as also the UN Secretary General. The list, the details are there in my statement. With regard to his uh, landmark visit to Australia, uh, the Prime Minister held a meeting with his counterpart on May 24, signing the Migration and Mobility Agreement there was one of the highlights of the visit. It shows the commitment of the Modi government to support students, to support students and explore the global workplace. During his stay, the Prime Minister interacted with a very wide array of public figures, participated in a business roundtable, and addressed the Indian community, sir. I think we all had the privilege of seeing it in person. Many of us watched it in this nation on our television screens. Uh, and definitely, it was one of the most memorable visits uh, made by any head of government to Australia. Uh, and I think many honourable members would recall the words with which Prime Minister Albanese greeted Prime Minister Modi, calling him the boss. So I wish to also add that during the visit, Prime Minister announced our intention to establish a new consulate in Brisbane, and this is something which we will be doing for the benefit of Indians abroad, as well as for NRIs uh, very, very soon. Sir, I would now like to say a few words about Prime Minister's visit to France. He was a guest of honour at the Bastille Day. The Bastille Day is the national day of France. It is like our January 26th. We had a tri-services military contingent from India, including the Punjab Regiment. Uh, Punjab Regiment, sir, has a great history in France. It helped to defend Paris during the First World War. Uh, and Prime Minister, sir, was given the rare honour of being conferred the Grand Cross of the Legion of Honour. This is France's highest civilian award. And Prime Minister Narendra Modi was the recipient of this award. He held meetings with the President, the Prime Minister, the, the heads of the two chambers of the Parliament, with CEOs uh, of Indian and French companies, and we announced the setting up of a new consulate uh, in Marseille. We also will be really, we also release sir, a vision document about our strategic partnership that goes on till 2047. On his way back, Prime Minister visited the United Arab Emirates in Abu Dhabi. He held talks with uh, Sheikh Mohammed, the president of the UAE, and it resulted in three very important outcomes: the uh, trade settlement in our national currencies the interlinking, uh, interlinking of payments of central banks and the establishment of a campus of IIT Delhi in Abu Dhabi. Prime Minister received the president designate of COP28 because we will have a very notable role to play at that gathering. A month before this visit, sir, Honorable PM paid a state visit to Egypt. It was the first bilateral visit by an Indian Prime Minister in 26 years. He held talks with 
the president of Egypt, and we elevated our ties to a strategic partnership. We signed agreements in agriculture, in preservation of monuments, archaeological sites, in competition laws. We announced direct flights between Delhi and Cairo and a center of excellence of IT in Cairo. In a special ceremony, sir, this is, should be a matter, this should be a matter of great pride for all Indians, for all members of this house. Prime Minister was conferred the Order of the Nile, which is the highest state honor of Egypt. Another notable development, sir, during this period was the co-hosting of the third uh, summit of the Pacific India uh, Pacific Islands Forum jointly with Papua New Guinea uh, on May 22nd. Prime Minister was received with great warmth, with great courtesy when he arrived in Papua New Guinea. And sir, I think all members would have seen how the Prime Minister of uh, Papua New Guinea paid his personal respects to our Prime Minister uh, in a manner in which so traditional in India. And I think it speaks great volumes today of India's standing, of Prime Minister's standing uh, in the world. Uh, during his stay in Papua New Guinea, sir, Prime Minister was conferred the Grand Companion of the Order of Logohu by the Governor General of PNG, the Companion of the Order of Fiji by the Prime Minister of Fiji, and presented with Ebaka, which is a symbol of leadership and wisdom by the President of Palau. Each of these gestures, sir, I think should be noted and appreciated uh, by members, by all citizens of this country, because it collectively it reflects well on all of us. Uh, on the outcomes of the FIPIC summit, sir, I want to say that we launched uh, the Sustainable Coastal and Ocean Research Institute in uh, Suva, in Fiji the data warehouse for empowering Pacific Island countries, which will host geospatial data. This will be in Papua New Guinea. And we announced a range of health, IT, education, uh, and uh, public delivery initiatives from a 100-bed hospital in Fiji to an IT center to Jaipur Foot camps to sea ambulances. So our development partnership today is something which is making a very deep impact among the countries of this region. For the first time, sir, after we joined the SCO, uh, we, we hosted the uh, meeting of the Council of the Heads of State. It was done by the Prime Minister uh, on 4th July in a virtual format. They adopted uh, the New Delhi Declaration and two joint statements on countering radicalization and cooperation in digital transformation. I would like to inform you, sir, that during our presidency, we hosted 15 ministerial visits, over 130 institutional meetings, with the focus, the theme for us was SECURE, which was an acronym that, that uh, signifies our priorities. I would now like to talk, sir, about our neighborhood. Uh, engagements with immediate neighbors have been prioritized after the Modi government came into office in 2014. Two prominent visits were those of the Prime Minister of Nepal and the President of Sri Lanka. Uh, Prime Minister of Nepal paid his visit from May 31 to 3 June. Uh, he and the PM participated in virtual groundbreaking ceremony of six projects including integrated check posts, railway lines, petroleum pipeline facilities, and transmission lines. They witnessed the handing over of the Kurtha Bijalpur section of the railway line. I know many members would have an interest in that. And they reached understandings on electricity imports from Nepal and on sale to Bangladesh through India. We have also committed to expand the border petroleum pipeline infrastructure. Where the President of Sri Lanka was concerned, this was his first visit to India in his present capacity. He had a very good discussion with our Prime Minister, and we covered all aspects of connectivity, from maritime, air, and energy, to financial and people-to-people. -people. We signed agreements on developing uh, development projects in Trincomalee District, on animal husbandry, renewable energy, and UPI interface. 
Prime Minister sir raised issues related to the Tamil community in Sri Lanka and I hope sir that the members of parliament with interest in this special subject should listen to this that he reiterated the need to fulfill the aspirations of Tamils. He underlined the importance of implementing the 13th Amendment and conducting provincial council elections. He also took up the issue of Indian fishermen. I'm sure you are aware that this is an issue which is frequently raised in this house also. And he requested the Sri Lankans to approach it on a humanitarian basis. Uh, may I, sir, touch briefly on the subject of the G20? I would like to assure you that it is advancing. The pressing issues facing humanity are being highlighted. We are focusing on mission life, uh, on the popularization of millets, on a human-centric approach to climate action and development, as well as on use of technology to transform lives. We have had a number of ministerial meetings of the G20, sir, across India, including the development minister's meeting in Varanasi, in Hyderabad, in Goa, in Pune, in Gandhinagar, in Goa, and in Chennai. So, we are realizing our intent to make India's presidency a truly national endeavor and showcase India to the world. So, I would also like to assure you that uh, ministers of the MEA have been very active during this period. I myself have traveled extensively in uh, Africa and uh, in Latin America. My colleague ministers of state have done so as well. May I say a few words, sir, about Operation Kaveri? Uh, this, this was an operation which was launched because of the armed conflict in Sudan. Uh, and uh, uh, we used both the Air Force and the Navy to bring back uh, almost four, more than 4,000 of our citizens. So once again, we have shown that the Modi government will never leave its people behind during any crisis anywhere in the world. Where fishermen are concerned, we have been successful in bringing back 74 of them from Sri Lanka and 398 of them from Pakistan. So in conclusion, sir, I would like to state that uh, today we are serving Indian foreign policy serves as a force for good, for stability. We vigorously defend our national interests and we promote international cooperation abroad. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mantri Ji. India TV, har vakt, har jagay. Download karne ke liye search karein. India TV News, Google Play Store ya App Store par.